Last year, I did over 350 consultation calls with online entrepreneurs who do over $20,000 a month, all the way to $300 million a year. Here are the seven unconventional lessons I learned throughout that time. My name is George Tweetsev, and I've generated over $15 million in e-commerce sales, sold a venture-backed software company, and had the privilege of mentoring hundreds of entrepreneurs throughout the time. If you do over $20,000 a month, apply to work directly one-on-one with me. Let's start with the first one. Talent is static. Success is dynamic. You see, your IQ, your genetic code is already predetermined. The ceiling of your success is in a way written the moment you were born. But what isn't is the success you'll have throughout that time. Whenever I've done all these consultation calls, one thing always stands out. That the amount of success someone's about to start having is not so much determined by the level of talent they have, but by the level of opportunity commitment, and next sequence of moves they've already put in motion. People who have less talent than others can surpass people in success. Success is not so predetermined. In fact, one of these interesting studies found that the amount of money you make isn't so correlated with the amount of intelligence you have. So although the intelligence you have might be in a way static from the moment you were born, there's still a lot of hope that Your future is undefined and you have the potential to craft it to your choosing. The second most important lesson is that your mindset is a precursor to what's going to start happening. When someone is making a lot of money, but their mindset is one of ungratefulness, of not really appreciating what they currently have, they're in a way preempting their demise. And on the other hand, if someone is currently in a rough patch, but they approach the problem with a positive mindset, with a feeling that they're going to bounce back even harder than ever, those exact words they're telling me are a precursor to what started happening throughout that time. I have all of these conversations recorded and plugged into my CRM. In fact, I've tracked everyone over this last year and I took many different notes. And a lot of the things I've seen was that the things that they were talking about ended up happening no matter what it was they were saying. If they wanted to, whatever it is they were saying is exactly what ended up happening. But there's a couple of caveats. And that's where the third one comes into play. You see, the third one is that momentum is very fragile. The third one is that momentum is very fragile. When you catch an edge and you're riding a momentum and you're riding a wave of momentum, everything is going good. Success begets success. But as soon as you fall off, the negative spiral begins to happen. And you can quickly lose sight of all the things that got you there in the first place. So when good things are happening in your life, make sure to be very focused, lock in, and in a way, don't take other people's advice until you get out of that wave and are preparing for the next one. When you're in a barrel, there's only one move that you have to make, and it's to make sure you stay on the board. Because as soon as the momentum is lost, it's very hard to regain it. The fourth lesson is that the edge is everything. When putting yourself in the right position to where the wave breaks is everything. Finding a little loophole where a piece of advertisement you have for your e-commerce brand unlocks amazing variables. Low CPA, low CPM, high interaction score. That enables you to spend so much more money relative to other advertisements and gets you into the momentum so that everything else can work in your favor. Every single successful business throughout all of my years of helping entrepreneurs has been found on that one secret, which is that the edge is absolutely everything. Where a unique position in who a person is unlocks the success they have. Someone who has access to certain things, someone who has a product that has a great creative, someone that has some type of secret sauce, opens up a slight door that once they walk in, everything else starts unfolding in an incredible fashion. The fifth one is one that I told my close friend at the beginning of last year, and that is to start thinking about selling when you don't want to. The time where you should start thinking about selling your company or putting yourself in a position of exiting is six to eight months away from the time that you even want to start contemplating that reality. Because due diligence, And the process of going through an exit takes a long time to flesh out. 
And by the time you make the decision of like, oh, wait, I should think about selling, you're already three to six months behind. So you want to preempt. This is found in sales. This is found in almost every area of life, which is people want what someone else wants. And to be in a position of power is to have the feeling that you can choose to sell or you don't have to. That's when you're going to extract the most amount of money in your exit and you're going to retain so much of the power. And that only happens by being very proactive because there's a huge lag effect. The bigger your organization, the bigger your company, the longer the time frame. I just went to an event with Eric Spotiff and he walked us through the three to four year process of selling his $100 million company. You see my friend, he only sold his company for $6 million and it took him six to eight months. For Eric, it took three to four years and three deals fell apart at the last hour. The only way to achieve the level of success you want is to put yourself in an advantage. And the only way to have an exit you're proud of is to start thinking about a sale six to eight months before that even goes into your head. The sixth most important thing is that direction is more important than ability. You see, many moments of my life throughout the years had the bad decisions I've made throughout that time had nothing to do with my ability or my skill set. And it had everything to do with a slight change of direction, a slight frame of mind that caused me to make moves in a direction that only unlocked moves that weren't optimal. Whenever I see someone headed in a wrong direction, they think that their ability and their skill set is going to overwhelm that. But just like operating in the market or many other things in life, you have to go with the flow of life. For you to think that you as an individual can change the course of events, that you could change the course of the momentum in the market and override that is a recipe for disaster. You want to go, you go, you want to go with the current and leverage the whole market dynamics in your favor. That's when the great things start happening. And the last and most important thing that an entrepreneur needs to have is to be proactive. That is the separation between a true entrepreneur and an employee. The ability for you to be proactive and take full responsibility of each next step and sequence of moves that you need to make to garner your own success. To not be reliant upon waiting for someone else. The top entrepreneurs that I've seen throughout my years have a tenacity of preempting problems before they happen and putting themselves in a place where they are proactive on the attack and making sure they're riding that great momentum that they begin to generate for themselves. So take into account all these unconventional lessons and great things will happen to you. My name is George Tweetsev, and if you're an entrepreneur that does over $20,000 per month and you want to work directly one-on-one -on -one with me, I attach my link down below. I look forward to seeing you then.